Hey there, so I got a quick question for you. Is this you? Because whoever it is that I'm picking up on right now, like, you have a lot of gifts, a lot of profound spiritual gifts, and you want to offer this to people. Sometimes there's excitement of, ooh, like, look at this thing that I just discovered, or hey, maybe you should reconsider something. There's a very natural nurturing teaching aspect to your own personality. And, you know, you, you got the woo, you, you got the craft. Um, <laughs> I'm hearing someone say, yeah, 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 you got the looks, you got the body. You have a very seductive quality in your own being, the being the person that you truly are. And you might be having a bit of a pause right now. And it's sort of like, well, if you saw that six of pentacles before I cut it away, you know, this, well, how about this? How about that? Spirit is asking you to kind of take, take a bit of a moment and take some stock of where you are right now in your 3D relationships. Got the Empress. And because she's in the reverse, don't be worried. Like, considering that we do have this all-knowing high priestess, um, you're going to be encouraged in these energies to really understand what it means to be truly receptive. You're receptive to divine. I don't think that's your problem. But it's another step to learn how to be receptive within our 3D reality, mostly because our 3D reality has been a little bit icky towards us in the past. But whatever message we're going to be diving into today, Spirit wants to show you a way easier path to your emotional satisfaction. So we haven't met yet. My name is High Priestess Berries, psychic medium and divine channeler, hoping to help you find a way through this. Always remember, listen to your instincts and tap into your intuition. If there's anything that I talk about that doesn't make any sense, totally fine. Do not worry about it. This message may not be for you, but you're always welcome to go to the description below and submit your own request for a personal channeled message. So before before we go to um, cut our decks, and I, uh, I add a little bit of um, robustness to your pre-shuffle because I have some sacred sexuality energy going on at the base of your um, shadow deck. And there was a little bit of that seductive quality that I was picking up, but if it's not the word seduction, it is the word alluring. But at the top of the deck, we have the word surrender. And a lot of it is about surrendering to being receptive to your 3D reality, the relationships that you are engaged with right now, because there's something really cool that you're going to be learning about yourself, your own individual nature. And I really think this is going to help you really ground in that potent self-love. And before I go to cut the decks, this is kind of interesting. We have the Don Juan with the Emperor. And that's where I was getting some of this seductive quality. And I keep hearing, but there's, it's as though people perceive you like, you know, you're kind of doing this, doing your own thing. And other people might be mirroring you, kind of taking note about how you act, what you speak about. Is she for real? Is he for real? Are they for real? Trying to figure out, like, what is your deal? Because below, before I go to cut, we do have the card of the Messiah. A lot of what resistance you may be experiencing in your own personal reality is that they haven't encountered someone like you before, and the last time they encountered someone like you... They had an agenda using power for romantic attraction or otherwise exaggerated belief that you are the only means with which a cause can succeed, which explains this emperor. Well, the emperor can be this very rooted, grounded, divine, masculine energy. You know, he can be a little bit bullheaded. It's like, no, this is the way you got to do it. It can be a little bit of a preachy energy. And the funny thing is, it's not so much that I think you're being preachy. You're being perceived as preachy. So we're going to be asking spirit, what is your primary challenge right now in these energies? What is the main blockage? 
What solutions does spirit have for you so that you can move through? And how are you going to feel at the end of all of this? Because <laughs> this is, yeah, this is a, we got the damsel card at the base where it says, understanding the nature of healthy romance, inspiring you to rely on yourself. That is this sacred sexual energy, being that actual independent person versus waiting for a knight to provide you for seduction by romantic illusion, which is clarified by this ace of cups. You have a lot to offer and you have a lot to give. The challenge is that the people that you are encountering, they actually don't know how to be receptive. So what is your primary challenge going on right now? Mother, mother, very nurturing energy here. Nurturance, patience, unconditional love, joy in giving birth to life versus smothering or abandoning children, instilling guilt in children for becoming independent. And that's clarified by a six of wands. And it's sort of like you're, you're doing everything you know you should. Like, if you are the empress, you are being loving, nurturing, providing for, and you're being creative in what that provision is supposed to be. The challenge is that the people that you are interacting with, the last time they saw the face of what it was that you represent, the... It didn't work out so well for them. There was a bit of an agenda. And if you notice like how intense my body motions are right now, I'm trying to literally navigate through some intense masculine wounding energy, I believe. And part of it is because when we're receptive, we can become vulnerable. And I don't think this wound really has much to do anything with you. It has to do with a past life issue, whether this life or a, a previous, previous life. But we're going to say, because I don't think the people that you're hanging out with really jive with your belief system. We'll just say when they were younger, let's go the psychological approach, you know, whether if it's like, you know, they had a smother mother relationship, maybe these folks didn't have a great relationship with their mom or because we have the damsel at the base of the card, you, you know, when you encounter, uh, especially when you're like a young girl and you encounter people who are just a little bit too nice towards you. Like I've always been suspicious of people who are super nice to me because I'm like, what do you want? Because you know, they're being nice to you because an adult told them to like, it's this little low key suspicion that you have been encountering. So what is the primary blockage that you're dealing with right now? We've got the gambler and the justice, both in the reverse, relying on luck rather than hard work. With the justice, it seems unfair. You might be working with the perception that you're pouring in all of the work and it doesn't seem fair to yourself. And part of it is because you might be just very enthusiastic about all the things that you are learning about yourself, spirituality. Like a lot of us, I don't know if you were raised in a religion like I was, but you know, go out and preach the good word. And sometimes going out and preaching the good word, whatever that means to any of us, like good news, just in general, it can be a bit of a gamble because you never know if someone's just going to be like trying to cut you off or they're just going to start weighing everything against you or I'm getting like logically dusted off like okay sure but science doesn't say that and sometimes it's hard to get into the science argument because <laughs> quantum physics is its own can be its own sort of look compared to say biology or math even though we know it's all the same not everybody thinks the same way as we do right now even in your blockage spirit is asking you to turn this around if you have people around you that you have a loving connection with, even if you aren't agreeing with each other, it means you have a soul connection. And what's really cool about deep soul connections is that we can learn from each other through osmosis. Just by going through the motions, being ourselves, people can learn how to energetically learn from us through osmosis. 
You are encountering people who do not know how to be receptive. You can't change anyone and their free will is divine. So you need to ask yourself one quick question. Where am I not being receptive? Because I'm thinking about a real 3D reality, I'm seeing that with the plants, the things that you can see, touch, feel. You're around people that are very earthy in the way that they approach their reality. And they need to learn how to be receptive in their 3D reality before they can even learn how to be receptive to the 5D. And before I go a little bit too deep, let's have a look at what your potential solution could be. Okay, we have the scribe. It came out in the reverse with the page of wands in the reverse. Altering facts or plagiarizing others' work. It's not enough to say, you should just do. Um, look around at how you are interacting just with your reality, just in general. Where are you sometimes dismissive when someone gives you feedback or, you know, in some ways dealing with, say, childish energies? I'm hearing naive opinions. Um, because when I see the scribe and talking about, you know, like I hear it says altering facts and plagiarizing others work. This is actually more to do with that comment I made earlier about science and what science is supposed to be, what is true versus theoretical versus practical. It, it, you can uh, actually suss it out to theoretical science versus solid, you know, proven physical science and then, you know, argue everything in between from there. Ask yourself, what is it about your conversations with your loved ones that you're having a difficult time being receptive to. One of the greatest challenge when it comes to feminine energy is being receptive to things that even, even when they feel very uncomfortable, again, childish, naive, but think about it this way. Get into your own sort of like, you know, great grandparent energy. Like I never knew my great, I, I never knew my grandparents. It was not, uh, they weren't a part of my, my world because we lived in different parts of the world. Um, but like having that elderly sort of mentality, elders, like the real good ones you want to be around, they listen. They listen to whatever it is you're talking about listening to all of your fuck ups, listening to all the difficult things that you went through. And somehow they have a story to identify with what's going on. They have, um, a, a, I say the word narrative, but more so they know how to identify what it is you're going through. They've been there. They've done that. They got some good information to share. If you are around soulmates that don't quite understand what it's like to be receptive, but if soulmates can learn through energetic osmosis, you're being asked to turn the tables, switch up the flow of energy. Things have been a little bit lopsided, but it can be super easy by looking at things from a completely different angle. Learn to listen and learn to be receptive to the science. You know the science is real. Just I'm not accusing you of being anti-science. I think you believe that the science is real. But be receptive to their interpretation of the science. You know, sometimes I'm getting a little bit of Google it and let me show you kind of, um, you know, low-key conflict. It's that pushy masculine. You're like, well, no, if you look at it this and like, let's, let's actually look at the thing and like show it. Like it's a very practical energy that I'm picking up. Learning how to be receptive in masculine energy, whew, it's a, it's a tough one. It, it feels similar to the depression soup that I was talking about in yesterday's reading. But when you're in masculine energy that's actually healthy, that's actually trying to work it out, it can feel very thick and heavy. And you have to just breathe through it, allow it to flow. In many ways, a lot of the, um, the people that you're interacting with, they do have some blockages going on within their masculine energy that's preventing their ability to become even themselves receptive. But you just listening, acknowledging, listen to your divine channel, because there might be something in there that you can contribute to. 
You know, I pick up cards and I talk into a camera and I claim that I have universal knowledge. Here's the thing, you do too. You don't have to necessarily be picking up cards to be talking about your universal knowledge. Think of it as the people that you're interacting with. They are the cards. They are the reflection of the energy around and taking it in like you would a television show. Sure, like we watch TV or movies and every so often we want to comment, riff, or yell at one of the characters. That's totally normal. But can you learn how to find this very deep, grounded, receptive energy and just listen because a lot will start to unpack for the people that you love and care about and it's kind of cool because all you had to do is sit there and take some mental notes you don't have to worry about remembering everything and i think that's why the scribe is here as well because in the light aspect preserving knowledge and information one of the things that they talk about when you're trying to be cognitively receptive is try not to think while you are listening, that's where we can get caught up in interrupting or we need to like, no, no, go back and do this or we cut off the flow. Um, there's a lot of this sort of cut off information because not everybody thinks the same way. You're being encouraged to learn how to ski in these other people's energies. Get to know what, the way that they think energetically. Like, I don't know why the other day I had this like silly kid song. It's like skiing in the snow, just skiing in the snow and learning how to ride their energetic wavelengths. And it's interesting because as opposed to like say feminine thinking is like all over the place and like think we, we can bring it right here. Like, you know, it's like a little database, like it's like the matrix with all of their little glyphs. But when you're trying to be receptive and masculine energies, it's like conquering a mountain. You have to go all the way around the goddamn thing. And you're trying to find the tunnel that meets in the middle. And half the time the other person doesn't agree and you have to let it go. And this is about you releasing stuff in the moment. You already know what you need to know. And any kind of insecurity you might have about being receptive to information and then forgetting it, that is your little clue because you need to heal that first because that's preventing your ability for yourself to be receptive. So that said, as you're learning how to actually tap into your true receptive empress energy, even if that includes talking with people where you're kind of listening to them like, I understand that's why you think that way. Could you maybe consider another way? But you're being asked to also consider their way as well. There is some very enlightening information that you're going to detect on the other side of this paradigm. And as you're able to learn how to be receptive in your masculine energies, what's the potential final outcome? Mediator and the Ace of Pentacles, whoa. Gift for negotiating fairness and strategy in personal and professional life. Respect for both sides of the argument, booyah. You're gonna be able to have a brand new beginning because you were willing to double dog dare yourself to start listening to other people's perceptions of things. They can still be wrong, you are always, always welcome to have your fucking opinion about how these people operate. But what is kind of cool is, you know the phrase, sometimes when people just say it out loud, they need to say it out loud themselves and things suddenly make a little bit of sense. It's amazing what people can release when they just talk out loud without the interference, 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 allowing them to go from the beginning of their thought to the end of the thought and being willing to kind of sit there and just channel their energy with them with quiet solitude. This is difficult because um, if you identify as female, there is this wounding. There it is. Ooh, there it is. The women shall be silent within the church. And one of my churches actually had a really great explanation for what was going on. Typically, like, you know, you're a heteronormative woman. We, we just love to talk all the time. We like to yammer. Sometimes we can meddle in kind of things. I'm, I'm honest about my femininity. Um, and sometimes guys, they're just, they're just kind of waiting for their turn. Like, can I speak now? Because they have a huge thing they want to work around. If this is the mountain that they've been working through, this is their mountain of thought. But you'll notice in the center here, there's like a little bit of a, it looks like a flower. It's technically a little pentagram in the middle. Like, this is the way you think. 
That's kind of what it sounds like sometimes to someone who thinks more from a masculine perspective. But out here, they're trying to figure, okay, all right, all right, I'm doing the thing, but this is the kind of the thing. I'm going to kind of work it out. And if you interrupt halfway through, if they, you notice how I lost my train of thought there? Being receptive gives them a chance to come full circle on their own logic, their own understanding. And, you know, even though they start off with this little sprout and you give them the chance to go all the way through, it's creating roots for this person and it's helping them come back out on the other side and being able to realize their own gifts. You can't dictate to another person what their gifts should be or could be. That's up for them to decide. And masculine spirituality compared to feminine spirituality, even me, myself, observing in my own journey, seeing the benefits and practicality of that slow, grounded, thoughtful, masculine energy. This is about you healing an old feminine wound about it's inappropriate to talk, because true feminine energy is actually very receptive. Think about a therapist. It's much easier if a therapist just kind of keeps quiet and just lets you talk out loud. Think of it that way. If you need to give yourself permission to feel okay about just allowing the other person to talk. A few little caveats. If they are pushing you, bullying you, trying to sway you to their opinion, that is not a fair conversation. You are welcome to end it and walk away. But if they're talking out loud and they're trying to suss out their thoughts on their terms, you have the ability to anchor in their energy and allow that flow to go through. Your silence is way more powerful than I think you give yourself credit for. Because eventually what will end up happening, they will come full circle then they will see it from your perspective. They will have seen the mountain from all the way around and they'll understand the network of information, the tunnels that you've created within the mountain. It'll suddenly make more sense. This is about you being able to use your gifts to offer masculine energies a chance to finally work out their thinky thoughts because in the past, other toxic feminine and masculine energies have told, cut them off, made themselves doubt, been pushed, bullied. Like, you notice how I'm just like punching my hands? This is a softness. Always make this starting from you. And think about this reception to the divine. And always ground yourself there. Use that channel and use that energetic flow when you're interacting with your loved ones. You have something that they're going to learn. And the best part is, is that you won't actually need to say much. All you've had to do is just sit there, listen, and that is the way that they are gonna feel truly nurtured. I'm just saying, Whew. whoever you are, I really hope this helped. If you like my style, you are more than welcome to like, share, and subscribe. I've been excited to add more and more of you along for the journey. Thank you so much for being a part of this. That's it. If it didn't resonate with you, again, go check out the description below. You can submit your own comments or submit your own, uh, you know, query, if you will. And or you're welcome to go to the search bar up here and, you know, go check out that song I was listening to the beginning. I don't know the, the artist's name, but I just want to go, Mother, Mother, do, 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 do,